If you are a student of class 11 under CBSE board and are facing problems in understanding your textbooks of English core, so here is the place where your all problems can be solved. Join English Frog Club for a hassle-free and effortless learning. Today, we are going to do chapter Portrait of Lady. This is the third part in the series. Kindly visit the description box for the links for the other parts of the series. So, why wait? Let's proceed with the next part of the chapter Portrait of Lady. further what happens in the relationship between Kushwan Singh and his grandmother. Let's start with the understanding of the next paragraphs given in the story The Portrait of Lady. When I decided to go abroad for further studies, I was sure my grandmother would be upset. I would be away for five years and at her age one could never tell. But my grandmother could. She was not even sentimental. She came to leave me at the railway station but did not talk or show any emotion. Her lips moved in prayer. Her mind was lost in prayer. Her fingers were busy telling the beads of her rosary. Silently she kissed my forehead and when I left I cherish the moist imprint as perhaps the last sign of physical contact between us. So in this paragraph, the author is talking about what happens in, the, in their relationship when he decided to go abroad for further studies. So he was quite sure, he was confident that his grandmother would be upset. I would be away because he was going away for five years. He was sure that the grandson was going away for five years and the grandmother must be upset. But to the contrary, in opposite to it, he saw that, he said that his grandmother could uh, do, uh, I mean, uh, could understand everything. Why the author was worried? Because he thinks that at her age, one could never tell. He thinks that, at her age, one could never tell. So the author says that it, uh, as he was uh, going to leave for five years, he never knew. He never uh, knew whether he would be able to meet his grandmother when he'll come back, as he was going for a very longer period. And uh, but he was really surprised to see that his grandmother had the courage to stand all these. Uh, situ uh, to stand to this situation. She did not uh, say anything and she did not even become sentimental and rather she came to leave him to the railway station and did not talk but as her routine was that she uh, never used to talk anybody and she did not show any kind of emotion just uh, uh, her lips were moving in the prayer and she was lost in the prayer. Her fingers were telling the beads of her rosary. She was even at the platform. She was busy in her normal routine. Silently, she kissed my forehead. Okay, and uh, silently. He didn't say anything to the author. He didn't express any kind of emotion. But he silently kissed his forehead. And the author her really felt that uh, he cherished the moist imprint as perhaps the last sign of physical contact between them. So he, sa he said maybe that uh, kiss given by the grandmother and the moist imprint on his forehead was the last physical sign between them. But that was not at all. After five years, I came back home and was met by her at the station and he was very surprised that when he came back after five years grandmother had come 
to receive him at the station you know this is the time when no mobile phones and uh, uh, communication uh, devices have been developed and people could not uh, tell each other about uh, the day to day happenings as in this technological era we can remain contact through social media and there are many other ways to remain in contact so author was really surprised that his grandmother was still so active that she had come to rel the station to receive him she did not look a day older and the author again noticed about his grandmother that she looked uh, in the same as he has left her 5 years ago she looked in the same manner she still had no time for words now this expression she still had no time for words no time for words means she did not speak and why she clasped me now what do you mean by clasp clasp is to give a hug in her arms i could hear her reciting her prayers even on the first day of my arrival her happiest moments were with her sparrows whom she fed longer and with frivolous rebukes that day she was very happy like she was happy that his uh, her grandson has come back after such a long time but that day also the happiest moments she had happiest moment she uh, she had for the day was the feeding of the sparrows and uh, that day she fed the sparrows for a little uh, she fed the sparrows for a little longer so there seems to be a, a no change in grandmother's routine the author was really surprised to see all these things that the grandmother did not change at all now let's see what happens next in the story in the evening a change came over her this was the first day the author noticed some kind of change in the attitude in the behavior of her grandmother and what was the change she did not pray that was the change that she did not pray instead of praying she collected the women of the neighborhood got an old drum and started to sing now old drum she got an old drum you know uh, most of the uh, at the time of some uh, weddings and other uh, occasions uh, in the in a house in especially in punjabi families as the author belongs to punjabi family uh, the happiness uh, and the other all these uh, functions are celebrated by uh, singing with uh, singing and uh, playing on the drum so that day the uh, grandmother also got some an old drum and she started to sing for several hours she thumped now what do you mean by thumped thumping is the i mean playing on the drum with uh, her hands so that is uh, called thumping imagine this is a drum and she is playing on the drum so this is called thumping okay and thumping on the sagging sagging what do you mean by sagging sagging is the i mean uh, it's not uh, quite stiff one as the drum is quite old the skin of the drums has been uh, sagged due to the as it was not in use and it was not quite uh, uh, quite uh, stretched uh, stretched one so it was sagging skins of the dilapidated drum now what do you mean by this dilapidated drum dilapidated drum stands for that as the drum was quite old and it was not in a good condition its condition has been worsened so she even then she never care what was the condition of the drum the skins were sagging uh, sagging uh the there was sagging and sagging skins and the drum was not in a perfect shape but she did not mind she sang the homecoming of warriors what was the thing that she sang she sang about the homecoming of warriors like his grandson has come after uh, his grandson had come after such a long time and then she wanted to uh enjoy that moment she wanted to celebrate that that is why she collected the ladies started playing at the drum playing the drum and singing the songs related to the homecoming of warriors 
we had to pursued her to stop now it she was so involved so engrossed in all this thing that she wasn't listening to anybody and the family had to pursued her to stop to avoid over staining okay that was the first time i had known her that she did not pray that he, the author says that in his life throughout his life that was the first time he saw that his grandmother did not pray now let's see what as she was quite old aged there must be some kind of uh, uh, effect of this over straining herself on her let's see what happens next next morning she was taken ill as the family was expecting that due to the over straining she will be ill and it happened she became ill she had a mild fever and the doctor told us that it would go but my grandmother thought differently she told us that her end was near she said that since only a few hours before the close of the last chapter or her of her life she had omitted to pray she was not going to waste any more time talking to us okay now there are uh, the doctor they called the, the family called the doctor and the doctor uh, said that it was just a mild fever fever and it will be over by a day by a couple of days but grandmother was quite intuitive she could guess that her end was near and she told everybody that it was an i mean she was not uh, about to li uh, live for a longer time and she as she has omitted her prayer she did not pray before her end was close so she wanted she did not want to waste any time and she wanted to uh, stay alone and spend the remaining uh, breaths uh, spend her re remaining time in remembering the god and she asked the family to go away we protested but she ignored our protest she lay peacefully in bed praying and telling her beads even before we could suspect her lips stopped moving and the rosary fell from her lifeless fingers a peaceful pallor spread on her face and we knew that she was dead so the family protested that they do not want to uh, leave her but she ignored everybody and she wanted to live peacefully for the these last moments of her life the author says they could not even suspect they could not even guess when she uh, had her last breath when she breathed her last breath okay, only they noticed that the her lips had stopped moving and her rosary fell from her lifeless fingers and there was complete peace at her pallor pallor is the face you know her face looked completely uh, silent uh, completely uh, peaceful and everybody knew that she was everybody came to know that she was dead we lifted her off the bed and as is customary laid her on the ground and covered her with a red shroud so after her death what happened what did they do and how they went for cremation and uh, did other things the how they performed the last rites we lifted her off the bed and it was as it is customary customary means it was a custom but it is a custom still prevalent in india in uh, uh, in all the indian families that as soon as someone dies they put that uh, the dead body of a person on the uh, floor they did not keep that on the cot bed etc so that is put on the floor and grandmother was covered with a red shroud now what is red shroud red shroud is a kind of uh, shawl after a few hours of mourning we left her alone to make arrangements for her funeral in the evening we went to her room with a crude stretcher to take her to the to be cremated 
The sun was setting and had lit her room and veranda with blaze of golden light. We stopped halfway in the courtyard all over the veranda and in the room right up to where she lay dead and stiff. Wrapped in the red shroud, thousands of sparrows sat scattered on the floor. There was no chirruping. We felt sorry for the birds and my mother fetched some bread for them. She broke it into little crumbs the way my grandmother used to and threw it to them. The sparrows took no notice of the bread. When we carried my grandmother's corpse off, they flew away quietly. Next morning, the sweeper swept the bread crumbs into the dustbin. Now, here in this paragraph, uh, the behavior of the sparrows after the death of grandmother is described here. Like uh, they had left uh, the dead body of their of uh, their of the old lady and to do some arrangements regarding her funeral, and uh, that uh, uh, at that during that time the spar it was time for the sparrows to come and get bread and all, all those things. But when the sp sparrow noticed that the grandmother was dead, they uh, sat quietly. They did not chirrup. There was no chirruping. Okay, there was no chirruping, and they did not chirp. They did not say, and they did not uh, utter any. Uh, they did not uh, utter anything. So why? Because the birds were also not happy uh, when the grandmother died, and uh, they uh, it was their way of uh, mourning over her death. They did not uh, uh, speak anything. They did not chirp, and but they felt sorry. The author and the other members of the family felt sorry for the birds and they uh, his mother author's mother get got some bread and she threw the crumbs on the ground as the grandmother used to but uh, uh, the sparrows did not notice anything about that and when they carried away her their grand when his grandmother's corpus corpus is the dead body so when they carried away grandmother's corpus the sparrows uh, flew quietly and in the next morning that breadcrumbs been swept away by the sweeper and were thrown in the dustbin. So in this way sparrows who were attached to the grandmother they also showed their uh, love and affection towards grandmother by not eating anything that day and sitting quietly. Imagine hundreds of sparrows, scores of sparrows used to come uh, and get fed by grandmother and that day they did not even, I mean, they did not uh, even touch what was given to them for, uh, for uh, feeding. So that is all in this chapter in which we have read about the relationship of uh, Kushwan Singh with his grandmother when he was in the village, when he came to city and when he went to university and how the relationship uh, changed with the passage of time as the author start, uh, grew in age and the relationship became a little distant. That is what is described in this biographical a biographical chapter of written by Kushwan Singh on his grandmother. Master your language with textbooks. Keep understanding your textbooks with English Frog Club. Certainly you will be fluent. Comment in the comment box about the video. Your comments are like gems. Do you like the video and hit the bell icon. Remember to share with your friends and family. And if you are new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe. Keep watching my channel and keep me encouraging for what I am doing for all of you.